And just by watching this video, uh, nothing's going to happen. It's not, nothing's going to change in your life unless you take action on that. And so that's what I want to provide you today is an easy plan to take action with. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Jason Pizzino. Today's video, let's get stuck into the mistakes of investing. No better time than to start now because what we've seen in the market is a crash. But I don't want to dwell on the crash because you've probably seen the last few videos. It's just been crash, 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 crash. So today I want to talk about how we can action this step. Now is the time because of where we find ourselves in the market. And I'm going to jump on and show you some charts just in a moment. But what I want to say around the mistake in the market is not starting soon enough. So I do talk about dollar cost averaging a lot on the channel. And the reason why I do that is because it's such a simple, easy plan to get stuck into for any level of investor. Um, you don't have to be at the top end, you can be from a beginner, you essentially just need to write a very basic plan and stick to it. And why I bring it up now is because we've seen the crash and if we look at the averages compared to now and what they were uh, a few weeks ago even, uh, we'll see that now is a much better time. So I'm gonna go through some crypto charts and I'm also gonna go through some of the US indices. And just before I jump into the charts and show you the actual data, I want to mention why I'm so passionate about talking about taking action in the market. And I mention it at every single video and I hope some of you and you know, like myself, we, we just get in there and take action. And that's because there's so many of these investment videos out there. There's a numerous amount of channels. There's so many there's, and there's so many videos coming out about it that I and maybe you as well find yourself overwhelmed with how many videos are out there. And it's so easy to keep watching the next video and the next video and the next video thinking that there might be an easier way to invest. There might be uh, an easier time to. There might be someone out there that can help me a little bit more than the next person. And really at the end of the day, it's always going to come down to us having to do the work for ourselves with our investing. So I just wanted to put that in there and it might be something that I come back to quite often in the videos because you know, I did it with a lot of the self-development videos and maybe you found yourself in that as well, is that you can watch so many of these self-development videos and unless you take action, nothing's really gonna get done. And just by watching this video, uh, nothing's gonna happen, it's not, nothing's gonna change in your life unless you take action on that. And so that's what I wanna provide you today is an easy plan to take action with. And just one last little tip on that, what I like to do is when I'm watching a video on YouTube, is I'll write some notes down after that video. And if I found that I haven't been able to use that video in any particular way, then I'll watch less of that type of video or less of that YouTuber. So I hope you're finding value in what I'm putting out there. Let me know in the comments down below if you are and what you've been actioning. I would really love that because there's nothing more that I want to do than to help other people invest and get on their passive income journey, get out of their job, get out of their grind, and live a more free lifestyle through investing and through working and doing what they love to do, like I do. Okay, so let's jump over into the charts and let's start with Bitcoin. So over here in front of the computer, and I'm gonna jump across just in a moment, but first, what is the biggest mistake? The biggest mistake is not liking the damn video. Go and like the video, make sure it goes blue, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and the bell notification icon because it helps out the channel. Thank you, let's jump across into the charts. Here we are in front of Bitcoin. Now let's look at this chart and what you can see here first is bar chart, not candles. I like to use a bar chart. And on this blue line here, this blue line is the close of the week. And we can see that's around 5,300 US dollars on Bitcoin. And don't worry, I'm not gonna get super technical in this. I just wanna demonstrate why now is a massive opportunity to get into the market and why not to make this mistake of starting too late. We've got Bitcoin here and what we can see here is the blue line. Underneath the blue line are all of the weeks. So every single one of these little white lines is a week and underneath the blue line are all the weeks that have closed below the current price. All of the white lines are all of the weeks that have closed above the current price. So when we talk about dollar cost averaging, I like to take a simple plan and just say, I'm going to buy Bitcoin at the end of every single week at the closing price. So for me in Australia, that's 10 a.m. on a Monday. That's really easy. I've got a chart here, and then I've also got my Excel spreadsheet. And what I've done is list all of the prices going back to the first major panic in 2018. 
And like I said, I don't want to make this too complicated. I want to make, like just give you some idea of how basic the plan can be. And what I've done is write down all of these prices. You can see here, 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 all of these, and then numbered it and then figured out an average of what that price would be if I was to have bought at every single close. So if I started at the major panic, and then you're gonna, the next question, taking a step back, would be, why would I start at this time? And what I've done is just pick multiple different times throughout the market that were high in emotion. This one is why I'm starting is because we broke through this level here. And if you were sitting in the market at that time, this was very emotional time. Uh, it was breaking the support of 6,000 cleanly and then it just started to tank. So if you had the gonads to buy on this dip, buy on this drop, this breakout, and you bought every single week, that was about you know a year and a, and, a, and a third so far, the average price you would get in at is this price here, Major Panic 2018. 7,230, thereabouts. This next number over here is the result compared to if you had just bought once right now. That's as clear as I can make it. If it's not clear enough, let me know in the comments down below. I will do my absolute best to help you out there. Going back to the Bitcoin chart, we are now looking at the next one, the bear low. I've taken the bear low as being right at the bottom. So if you were lucky enough to get in here right at this bottom, you know, you, you deserve a crystal ball. To be able to pick that absolute bottom, you are an absolute superstar. So I'm just getting my head cut off. Dollar cost averaging in from the absolute bear low, we are looking at 7,410 US dollars per Bitcoin. So most of the time, we know that we're not going to buy on the absolute low or on the break of the low because we're fearful. There's always fear in the market like that when these times happen. And generally, we start to buy back when the market's going up. So I want to take that into consideration and then dollar cost average from that point because realistically, you're probably going to be buying or at least start buying into your plan on the way up. And so what we've got here is the bear breakout. So I've marked that as this point here on the chart. You can see where the crosshair is going through. You've got this one bar through here just breaking out of these lows. That's the first time. Most people probably wouldn't have bought on that either. You can see the huge volume. These, these lines down here are the volume. And that was the first chance you had. Then I've got a few more points here on the way up. There's another breakout date. Then we have the absolute top. So the mini bull top, that's right here. That's probably more likely where most people are going to buy, right? Right at the extreme peak of the emotion. Right at the top end here is where most people are probably gonna buy. So even if you started dollar cost averaging in at the top because you thought this thing was going to 20,000, we are looking at a $9,000 Bitcoin. So that's the worst case scenario. If we'd started at the top, we'd be down 40% by now, which is a lot better than buying everything in at the top. That closing price was somewhere around nearly $11,000. So you're $2,000 better off. Pretty good, that's 20%. So I think you get the idea. Now, the whole point here is to don't miss this opportunity. This opportunity is if you hadn't dollar cost average in at all through the whole period, and you're thinking about it now, my belief is not to hesitate. We're at 5,300. That is the lowest it has been throughout this entire dollar cost averaging period. You can see here 5,300. At no point throughout any of these prices do we see 5,300. Only in the last one because it's the last week. If you just started now, you, your average would be 5,340. All of these times you would be 30% better off, 37%, 36, 38, 35, 40, 37, 27, and 26% better off, even if you had started dollar cost averaging in at the first break back here. Let me get a little cursor there. You can see that? If you'd started back here, like you'd have to have pretty strong will to get in at that time. So that hopefully explains why now is probably one of the best times to get in. And even if this thing goes lower, your dollar cost averaging, there's no, no problem. If it goes higher in very quickly, then maybe you know, it wasn't as good of a time. Little things you can do to negate that would be to maybe just go in a little bit heavier on this point, you know, on this week. But that's up to you guys. All right, let's move on and let's quickly look at some of the other charts. So before I jump onto the other charts, one other thing that always comes to mind when we're looking to invest is that we're thinking, I wish I had started sooner. I wish I started a year ago. I wish I started five years ago. I wish I started a few months ago when it was at its low. All those sorts of thoughts come up and we just don't do it. So what I want to do is jump across quickly and look at NASDAQ, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, Aussie market, and then a couple of other cryptos to demonstrate where we are in relation to where the market was. So let's have a look at the NASDAQ first because 
what I'm doing is starting with the strongest. All right, so we're with the NASDAQ now, and you can see that we're sitting somewhere around 8,000 points, and that is going back to July of 2019. So if you had a time machine and you were going back 12 months from now, somewhere around March, you're sitting at 7,400. So really we've gone back about nine or 10 months. There we go, so that, that's the point that we're at now. Now the NASDAQ is the strongest out of the three US indices. So we've got the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the Dow Jones. And what I mean by the strongest is that it's held up the most in comparison to the others. So it's only gone back to its highs of July. Whereas if we look at the S&P, the S&P has sunk well below its highs of July, blown through those highs, which were just back here. And now it's sitting somewhere in 2018. So really, your time machine's gone back further on the S&P, but the thing to understand with the S&P is that it's looking a little bit weaker than the NASDAQ. So that's always something to consider. Although you're getting a bigger discount, it's at what expense? Like how weak is the overall market? Is it going to climb as much as the NASDAQ, even though you've got a slightly less discount on the NASDAQ? Same is to be said for the Dow Jones. So we're looking here that it has blown well back to its prices of 2017. So there's a two and a half year time machine on the Dow Jones. And it's even blown through its lows in December of 2018. Whereas if you look at the S&P, it still hasn't reached its lows and the NASDAQ still hasn't come back to its lows. It's only barely just touched its highs. So it's sitting on its highs and that's, that's a stronger sign than these other two. Definitely something to keep in mind, even though the fall has been pretty dramatic. Okay, moving on to the Aussie market just quickly. It's probably not gonna be interesting to any of the Americans, but you can see the Aussie market barely even broke through its 2007 highs, whereas the American markets broke through those many years ago. And the 2007 highs of the S&P well back here, you know? So briefly on the Aussie, Aussie's looking very weak indeed. And we might even break through these lows in early 2016. So we could have a four year time machine on our hands for the Aussie market. Okay, lastly, I just wanna to touch on Ethereum on the cryptos. So let's look at Ethereum. And we have essentially used a time machine to go back to the bear market lows of late 2018. So. About 15 months ago, the, these prices was the last time that we saw these prices. Same can be said for Bitcoin Cash back in 2018. Ripple, Ripple is, is the weakest out of all of them. This is going back to 2017 prices. So that's something that I don't really wanna see for my own investments. I don't wanna see it breaking heavy lows. It could keep going on and burst through its old highs of three bucks but it's just got a lot more work to do. And the last one here is EOS, because that was also such a big one in 2017, 2018. And we're back to the prices of late 2018. I hope you enjoyed that slightly different presentation of understanding the markets. Really, we can see that we have basically hit a time machine, if you want to call it that, and gone back at least 12 months in some of these cases and, and in others, almost three years worth of price increases. So we've dropped almost three years worth of price increases. So if you found yourself at that time saying, oh, you know, I don't think the, the time's right to get into the market. And as the market rose, you were sort of feeling that you needed to get in and maybe you didn't do it. Now is that time to go back three years ago. So that is the point of the videos. Don't make the same mistake as three years ago. Put the plan into action now and then just write it out. The proviso here is that if the market goes down, have to be willing to cop some of the losses in the short term. But if you've got a long-term outlook, then you know we could see these losses recovered. Right now, it could just bounce from here and go straight back up. Personally, my opinion is I think we've still got several more months left of a downtrend. So, you know, I'm just bracing myself, slowly getting into the market yet again, because at this point, the prices are so much better than they were just two months ago. So that's the way I'm looking at it. I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know in the comments down below what else you would love to understand about getting into the market. I get your questions on Instagram and on Facebook, um, especially for cryptocurrency. I know that can be a bit of a difficult thing sometimes, but uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you are doing at this point. And if you need any other assistance with that, go and follow me on Facebook. And I've also got a investment group over there, Optimize Your Life. Link is in the description down below. See you over there. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Always helps out with the algorithm. And I'll catch you at the next video. But remember, until next time, have more fun to get more done.